we come to celebrate the risen Jesus. We give thanks and glory to God for what he has done for us. We also give thanks today for the precious life of Alora. And today is a special Sunday as we dedicate Alora to God and give thanks for her precious life. Isaiah chapter 52 and verses 7 to 10. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up your voice, their voices. Together they shout for joy when the Lord returns to Zion. They will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, for he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Amen. And we stand to sing those words in 254. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news.
our God reigns. Jesus was crucified to die for our sins. He went to the cross that we could be forgiven. But last week we celebrated that he has risen from the grave to give us new and eternal life. So he's singing 237. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord who can compare with the beauty of the Lord. Forever he will be the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship him alone. So we come to worship him. We come to glorify his name. We come to give him thanks for what he has done for us. We'll sing this through. Then anyone who feels led to pray, then please lead us in prayer. Thank you. Rejoice in the risen Christ. Lord, when you look back these few days to what you suffered at Calvary for us, you went to the cross because you loved us. Lord, let us worship you, adore you without ceasing that your name would be uplifted. Let our thoughts and our plans be incorporated in your guidance for us. Because if we rely on you, Lord, we will keep on that pathway. We thank you, Lord, for all your countless blessings to us. We thank you that we have the health and strength to come here this morning to worship and praise you. And we think of those, Lord, who would love to be here with us but cannot do so through age and illness. But Lord, we look to the wider world and we see the evil of the vines. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine as they suffer the belligerence of Putin and his government. Lord, we thank you for those who seek to help those dear people who have rescued them from that purge that's happening there. So bless them, Lord. And we do pray in thee, Lord, that, because we know that you are in control of all things, but man has decided that he doesn't want to obey you for his own ends. Lord, we pray 
pray for this service this morning. Would you bless everyone present here? That we adore you, we praise you, we glorify your name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, in the most precious love. Father God, we thank you we're able to come before you here today to worship you, to glorify your name, to give you thanks for the great things that you have given for us. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be reconciled to you. But Father, for that to happen, we need to recognize our need of you. We need to recognize that we are sinners that need forgiveness. And Father, help us to look at those areas in our life where we need to repent those things that hold us back in our relationship with you, those things that hinder us from doing the work you have called us to do, and help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to be the people you would have us be. Father, we look at our world today, we see a world of darkness, we see a world of suffering, we see a world where there is so much hurt, so much uncertainty, so much unrest. And Father God, we pray that you will bring light to these situations, you will bring hope, and that you'll bring healing. Father God, we pray that you will use us as individuals, but also as your church, to bring hope and to bring your light, to show your love in the places that we are, in the things that we do, and that through our lives, Lord, people will be attracted to you and want to know more about you. Father God, we do pray for our world today. Father, for where there is wars, we just pray that there will be peace. We pray for world leaders, Father God, that you'll give them wisdom and guidance on how they can better the situations that are in our world today. Father God, today we give you thanks for new life and we give thanks for the life of Elora. And as we dedicate her to you today, Father God, we just pray that you'll be in her life. As she grows up, Lord, may she know you as Lord and Saviour for herself. May you protect her from the evils of this world and keep her safe. Father, we also think of the children connected to this core that we have not seen for a long, long time. And Father God, we pray for their young lives as well, Lord. We pray in the time they spent with us that seeds have been sown in their lives and that one day they will come back to us and once again be part of this family, of this fellowship. Father God, we just pray that you'll be with us in our everyday lives. And as we worship you here this morning, we pray you, you will be the centre of everything that we do and that your word speaks to our lives and help us to go deeper in our relationship with you and have a greater understanding of the lives that you would have us live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In a moment we're going to celebrate in the dedication of Elora. But before that, we're going to sing 583. And it says, Jesus, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child. Pity my simplicity, suffer me to come to thee. And as we sing this, I'm going to invite Michael to come with the flag. I'm going to invite Barbara um, to represent the YP Corps and the rate Cradle Roll. And I'm going to invite Simon Pauline and Elora to come to platform. So Michael and Barbara, if you come and stand this side, and Simon, Pauline and Elora, if you come this side. Thank you. But we got, before that, we're going to um, sing 583. And as we sing, if you would all like to come up.
I'm reading this morning from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21. Hannah dedicates Samuel. When her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband Elkanah told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. And after he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And when the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord, for his whole life he shall be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. Simon and Pauline, in the dedication of Elora, you desire to give her fully to God. You wish to thank God for entrusting this precious life into your hands. And you want her to be nurtured in all that is pure, lovely and honest. To this end, you promise that you will keep her from harm so far as you are able everything which is likely to harm her in body, mind, or spirit. You also promise that as she grows in wisdom and stature, you will teach her the truth of the gospel, encourage her to seek Christ as saviour, and support her in the commitment of her life to the service of God. You must be to her an example of a true Christian. If you are willing to make these promises, I will receive Laura into the name of God and on behalf of the Salvation Army. Can I please ask the congregation to stand? Um, Who's all these funny people looking at you? In the name of the Lord, and behalf, on behalf of the Belfast Citadel Corps of the Salvation Army, I receive this child, Elora Simon, in the recognition of the promises which have been made this day by her parents. Okay, I'm going to ask Barbara to pray. Elora, let me tell you of a man who was before the world began, who loves you more than anyone can, known by the name of Jesus. And he grew up a child like you, and every word he spoke is true. I pray you'll grow to love him too, and live your life for Jesus. Let's pray together. On this special day, Lord, in these special moments, we pray for Elora. We pray for Simon and Pauline and all their family that you would help them keep the promises they have made today. We give you thanks this morning for the gift of this child and this lovely family. We thank you for this church family and for those that will pray for them. Help each one of us to be the guide and example you would have us to be. And we pray for all the children that come through these doors week by week and all the young people. We pray that they would indeed grow up to live their lives for Jesus. So in these moments, as we make these promises and these prayers, we pray you would surround this family with your love. Bless us each today as we pray before you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> We also ask that the congregation continue to pray for Elora, for Simon and for Pauline. 
as they love and nurture Elora in her young life. Simon and Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back to mummy now. <laughs> in returning Elora into your care, I charge you to care for her in the name of the Lord and to keep the promises that you have made concerning her today. Amen. Amen. And we have a certificate for you of dedication. And also, her name has been put on our cradle roll. Oh, so she'll you. be remembered by the court. And we have a gift I'll, from... I'll give that one to you, Simon. <laughs> Thank you. She welcome me, Laura. <laughs> Just, we just ask you to put your names here, and then Barbara, can you sign as yes, a witness? Yes, I will indeed. You can just put your... We remain st st standing as we turn in our songbooks to 1011. Lord, with joyful hearts we worship. Then Simon and Pauline and Laura can go and sit down. And Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Lawrence is going to come and bring our Bible reading to us, which is taken from Genesis 22 and verses 1 to 14. Morning. The uh, reading this morning is Genesis 22, verses 1 to 14. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. And God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love so well, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him there 
as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey, and he took two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had gone, child, when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son, Isaac. He himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, he said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, The Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, Go to the mountain of the Lord. It will be provided. Amen. May God have his blessing to this reading of his word. Thank you, Lawrence. We now listen to a message from the band. We're going to play a tune this morning that has become one of the most popular uh, of more modern tunes. Uh, it's written by a Northern Irish composer, uh, Keith Getty, and uh, he actually wrote it whilst he sat on the promenade of Port Rush on what I would hopefully would think would be a nice sunny day. So it was one of those odd days that probably the sun was shining. But this little tune that he wrote down because he was inspired to write it has become one of the most popular tunes. I'm sure you'll know the, the melody, In Christ Alone. <laughs>
Thank you, Ben. Have you ever given your children back to God? Maybe there's times when you think, well, I'd like to give them back. And I'm sure most parents have at some time or moments in their lives when they thought they would like to package up their child and take it back to God's customer service counter and demand for your money back. But then I'm sure that the majority of the times you love them to bits and would never let go of them. I'm not suggesting that you return your child to God and try to get your money back. When I ask you if you've ever given your child back to God. What I am asking is, have you ever really recognised that your children are a precious gift from God? Do you recognise that they belong ultimately and always to God first? Have you recognised that God is responsible for the way in which they were designed? God already knows the plan and purpose that he has for their future. Do you recognise that God has left it up to you to show them his way and to nurture them into a loving Christian home? God asks us to put many things on his altar. And today he is asking us to bring our children and put them on his altar. There are many examples of parents in the Bible who brought their children to God and gave them back to him. The classic example of Hannah bringing her son Samuel, the son of for whom she prayed, and presenting him to God, and handing young Samuel over to Eli, the priest. 1 Samuel 1, 26, 27 to 28. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he shall be given over to the Lord. In Luke 2 and verse 22, Joseph and Mary brought the infant child, Jesus, to the temple, following his circumcision at eight days. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. But the true example of a parent surrendering his child to God that I want to look at this morning is that of Abraham, who offers Isaac at Mount Moriah in Genesis chapter 22. And let's see what God would have to say to us about giving your child back to God. Abraham literally, totally gave Isaac back to God. And that must have been a hard and painful experience for Abraham. Genesis 22, verse 2, God said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and sacrifice him. Isaac had been a miracle baby. He was born when Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100 years of age. Just try to put yourself in Abraham's place. It was incomprehensibly painful for Abraham to strap his dear son on an altar and a stack of wood. He raised a knife ready to slash open his child's chest and throat and cremate the body and sit by as he smelt the stench of burning flesh of his son. And then watch that boy literally disintegrate into a pile of ashes. I cannot imagine any parent doing that, even if God asks. But the best thing that Abraham ever did for Isaac was to, be, to tie him to that altar and to surrender him back to God. Had Abraham refused to give Isaac back to God, he would have forfeited all the promises that God had 
for Isaac and all the plans for his future. But because Abraham obeyed and gave Isaac back to God, Isaac received the fullness of God's best plan and promise for his life. Isaac became a wealthy man. He became the forefather of God's own son, Jesus. And Isaac's life is still having an impact and blessing millions of people worldwide through his offspring. And so you and I need to learn from Abraham. If we refuse and fail to give our children back to God, we may very well be forfeiting God's best plan and purpose for their lives. And when we entrust our children back to God, we secure for them the covenant of God's best purpose and plan for their lives. So what does it actually mean to give your child back to God? It means four things. Giving your child to God is a confirmation of your love for God. The first thing that you are saying when you give your child back to God is that you love God even more than you love that child. Your child is the most prized possession. But don't allow them to take the place of God. You are saying that you love your child so much that you want the very best for them. Even if that means giving them back to God. If it means disciplining them, giving them limitations, changing your life for their benefit. And this is exactly what Abraham proved by his willingness to offer Isaac. He was demonstrating that his love and fear for God was supreme in his life, above all else. Abraham loved God above the most prized treasure of his life, his only son, Isaac. Matthew, 20, Matthew chapter 10 and verses 37 to 38. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. This might sound a very difficult passage, a hard reading to take in. But then, when you think about it and realise that if you love God in such a way, you end up loving others in a way that God loves them. Therefore, you end up loving these people who mean so much to you, even greater than you did before. Because if we love God as we should love God, then we will love others in an unconditional way. In a way that never fails them, in a way that never lets them down. So if we put God first and love God first, then we will also love our families even greater. Because we would love them in a way that God calls us to love them. Secondly, giving your child back to God is a clarification of ownership. When you give your child back to God, you are openly declaring that this child is a gift from God. This child belongs to God. This child has been entrusted into your love and into your care. Therefore, you have the privilege to love and train the child in the way that God would have you love and train them. And this is what had to be on Abraham's mind when he lay Isaac on that altar. God, he was saying, Lord, this young man belongs to you, not me. Abraham was saying, you do with him as you please. He is yours. Your little child belongs to God. They are a precious gift from God. Psalm 127 and verse 3. Sons are a heritage of the Lord. Children are reward from him. Therefore, we need to be careful how we treat and care for what God has given to us. 
thirdly, giving your children back to God is a commitment to raise your child God's way. Ephesians 6 verse 4 says that we are to bring our children up in the training and instruction of the Lord. To give your child to God is not just a ceremony, it is a commitment. It's a commitment that you're going to be a godly parent, that you're going to teach your child about Jesus that you are going to take your child to church, that you're going to love your child, even if loving them means disciplining them and letting God discipline you as well. You are to pray for your child, to teach your child, to make your home a holy and loving place, to put away worldliness and live a righteous life. Some people see the dedication of a baby or a child as a magical ceremony. This ceremony means nothing if you are not making a sincere, lifelong commitment to raise your child God's way. Dedicating your child means dedicating your own life. In the dedication ceremony, it's the parents who make promises to serve God and live a holy life. Simon and Pauline, today you have made these promises before God. You are saying that you want your family to turn out right. And as parents, you're going to begin to lead Elora in the right paths. To teach her love, to teach her about Jesus. That's the kind of commitment that God is looking for in parents today. And finally, giving your child back to God is a claiming of God's plan and promises for your child's life. Isaac inherited God's blessings, protection and promises because his father Abraham gave him back to God. Your children are blessed by your obedience to God. But they're also cursed by your disobedience to God. I get so frustrated when I hear people complain about young people today. If young people behave in bad ways, it's because of the examples they have. If children are brought up with the right examples, if they're brought up with love, they will live the right way. When people complain about the young people of today, maybe we need to look at the parents, maybe we need to look at ourselves and look at the examples that we set them. As we obey God with our lives, as we give our children back to God. We are setting that child to receive God's very best for their life. Psalm 22 and verse 6, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. So that is what it means to give your children back to God. It's a confirmation of your supreme love for Jesus. It's a clarification of ownership that your child came from God and belongs to God and he has been given to you and entrusted into your care. And it's a commitment to raise that child under the lordship of Jesus Christ. It's a claiming of God's best plan and promises for that child's life. And this is exactly what transpired when Abraham took Isaac up Mount Moriah and laid him on the altar to give him back to God. Abraham was confirming his love and fear of Jehovah. Abraham was clarifying that Isaac really belonged to God. He was committing to be a godly parent. And he was claiming God's plan and promises for Isaac. 
I do not believe for a moment that God would ask any parent today to sacrifice their child in a way that he asked Abraham to. In effect, God was testing how much Abraham loved him and trusted him. However, God did sacrifice his own son Jesus as a sin offering for the rest of his children because of the love that he has for us and because he simply wants the best for his children today. We're going to watch a video of that beautiful song, I'm in his hands. Whatever the future holds, I'm in his hands. The days I cannot see have all been planned for me. His way is best, you see. I'm in his hands. Oh, when we put our lives into God's hands, when we put our children into God's hands, we know that they are secure, that we are secure. Because he has our lives planned for us if we simply trust him and allow him to be the Lord of our lives. We have our place of prayer here. We have our mercy seat. Maybe you want to come and use it as we listen to the words of this song. Whatever's troubling you, whatever's on your mind, if you haven't got even yourself over to God yet and made him Lord of your life, I invite you to do that here today. Thank you.
And Father God, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. And we thank you that we are part of that beautiful creation. You have made us as we are. And that you trusted us into the care of the parents that you brought us into this world. And Father God, we just pray for Pauline, for Simon, Andy, Laura today. We thank you for this beautiful young family. And Father God, we thank you for the promises that they have made today to raise a Laura into that loving home where they will serve you, where they will teach a Laura of your love and what it is to live for you. Father, we know that this world is not always a good place. There are so many temptations. There are so many things trying to lead us away from you. And we know it's not always for our young people today. There will be many distractions for Elora, Lord, as she grows up. There will be many temptations in her way. But we pray your protection upon her. Father, we just pray that as a core that we will help support Simon and Pauline as they raise Elora in this loving home. Father, we just pray for each and every person here today. Father God, we just pray that we will know what it is to be in your hands, what it is to have you as Lord and Saviour of our lives, what it is to follow you. On whatever trials, whatever hardships that we face in life, that we will know that we will not be alone because you are there with us. And Father, in those tough times, we pray your presence in a real and special way. And now whatever the future holds, we are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we turn to our final song, which is 219. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there because to prove my saviour lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. And life is worth, in, worth living just because he lives. Shall we stand to sing? <laughs>
as we share the grace together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.